Now, hey developers, today we have a really cool, I wanna show you guys, it's the MEVN tool, it's an MEVN CLI. It makes it really easy to create MongoDB, Express, Vue, and Node.js apps together. So it's kind of a full stack solution. I think it's really neat. I'm gonna show you some of the commands and how to get started with it. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also the author of a few books. I'm a big Vue.js fan, and if you're interested in JavaScript, React, Vue.js, Node, make sure you uh, click that subscribe button and click that like button, and tell me in the comments below what you think of this tool. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna make this video a little bit short today. I just wanna give you just the basics of getting started. So I'll put a link in the description for the CLI tool. And so really the idea behind this is you can use this one tool to create your full stack. So if you're creating a, a, a project that uses MongoDB and Express, instead of having to write all that boilerplate, use this tool and it's just a really quick way of getting started and I, you know, I enjoy it. You can also break out of it if you didn't like this. You can definitely add your own uh, technologies to it, your own libraries, whatever you want. But this is just kind of a, a nice way to, a quick starter to get up and running and has some good conventions. So uh, like I said, you can install the, the CLI tool pretty easily and I'll put a link in the description to this by just doing an npm install tac g m e v n c l i. So I have VS Code open here. If I do npm install, let's see here, M -E tac g m e v n c l i and hit enter, it'll go ahead and install for me. I already did this before this video started, so I'm not gonna do it again. After it's installed, you can then do this MEVN init, and that goes ahead and creates the uh, app for you. So I have an empty directory here, and by the way, I'm using Node 14, so you know your mileage may vary if you have a, a very old version of Node, but this one seems to work. If you do MEVN init, and just put, I don't know, I'll call it YouTube, test, YT test. It's gonna ask you some questions. So you can see here it has a nice little uh, API or CLI, little, little ASCII graphics for us. So now we can ask us, if do we wanna do default PWA or NUX? Now, if you do use, if you use default or PWA, this is using Vue, so it's still gonna be using Vue, but if you're a NUX fan like me, I always choose NUX. So I'll just go down to it, hit enter. And now it's gonna ask me, you know, basically the same commands you would use if you're creating a, a Nuxt app. So I can use universal SSR, SSG, single page app. I'm gonna do just node hosting in this case and hit enter there. And it went ahead and added everything I need. So if I go into YT test, um, I can run MEV, MEVN serve. So, but let's take a look at the folder and what it created. So here is the folder. And if we look at the client, so here's, it created a basic Nuxt app. So we have our Nuxt logo, um, some, our basic, what we usually get with our logo there. We have a layouts folder. So if we go into pages, here's our index. So this is our, a, a slightly modified version of the Nuxt app. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it says MVN starter template out of it. And if you look at the package JSON on this guy, it is using, um, looks like the Nuxt, uh, the latest version of Nuxt, so you aren't using an older version of Nuxt or anything. This does have the latest and greatest. And if we look at the server, it created some simple routes for us, just a, a basic git function that opens up an index.html using node here, and then our index.html gets loaded. Now you're saying, you're probably thinking, well, what about Mongo? But we'll, we'll look at that in a second. I just wanna show you guys how to get started here. So I can change directory to that M, uh, YT test folder and I have this client and server folder. So if I want to actually run it, I can do MVN serve. And it's gonna ask us what I wanna run first, client or server. So I'll just show you the client and this will just take a moment, it's installing de some dependencies. Okay, cool, so we went ahead and installed here and you can see it automatically opens up our web browser, Nuxt gets started after it installed all the dependencies and we'll see that page file that we looked at earlier, that hello world. So just take a moment. You can see here, MVN starter template for Nux. Cool, so our, that's, our, that's what it comes, that's what it looks like out of the box. If I do MEVN serve and then choose, uh, let's try server this time, oops. Make sure I choose server. This will just take a moment, it's gonna install some dependencies. Okay, cool, so now it has the server running in localhost 9000. 
So if I look at localhost 9000, API, yeah, so this is it. But there's really no routes or anything. We haven't really created an API. So one thing you can do is after you get it installed, and let's say I wanted to add MongoDB, I can do MEVN generate, and I have to make sure I'm inside the folder. And I can either generate components on the client side, or I can actually create a CRUD boilerplate for the server. So if I hit enter here, it's gonna ask you my MongoDB path, and I have the default path set up, so I'm just gonna hit enter. And by the way, if you are on your Mac right now and you don't have MongoDB installed, it's pretty easy. I use Brew on my Mac to install it, but you can find the Windows, I think it's, yep, you can download the Windows community MongoDB binaries and install it on, on your Windows machine if that's what you like. All right, so it said it, it's done. It has everything, installed everything. But we can see here, it actually added a few more folders for us. So we can look at controllers. It actually added a model. So it added this model for a user schema that has, and I'll go ahead and minimize this, make this smaller. It's just a, the, a really basic MongoDB schema that requires a name and age, and both are required. Um, so that's that's what our, our MongoDB schema is. Now if we use, look at our user controller, and we look back at our routes, now we have this basically CRUD, and CRUD stands for create, read, update, delete. And usually, if you're using REST, a RESTful interface, they map to your create, maps to your post, read, up, create, uh, maps to get, put, uh, maps to update, and delete up matches to a delete. And then sometimes you get a patch too, but we won't worry about that. And you can just send the body as JSON to the create, create, for the post, get, you can just do a get, and then you can send it as params for the put or delete. So that's it. And then you can see here, these four different create, read, update, delete are actually in our controller here. So here's all the code for you. You don't have to write it yourself. Uh, so new user created, here's your create data, read data, update data, and delete data. So we can test that out. And remember, we can do MVN, if I Click on the right thing here, MVM serve. It's gonna ask us what we wanna serve. I'm gonna choose the server. And now it's on localhost 9000. So if I refresh this, you can see here, actually, <laughs> uh, you see there's already data coming back and you're probably thinking, well, how is that even possible? Well, before this video started, am I, I created a MongoDB database and it's actually pulling data from that database. So it's, it's pulling the the information from the default database, which I believe you can set inside your API somewhere, what database it creates, maybe in the .env. So it just created a, a basic database and it's still using that one. I could show you though, if we go into our Postman, I have it set up here. You can, uh, Postman's a nice utility. There's, there's a whole bunch of utilities you can use to do calls to your API for testing purposes. I like Postman, but I know a lot of people use Curl and a whole bunch of other, I think there's Postwoman now someone was telling me about. All right, so here is, you can see here I'm doing a git. I have this Eric here. Now I can delete it if I wanted to. I just highlight here, I'm going to my localhost 9000 API. I'm gonna do a delete and I'm gonna pass it in as param, which means I'm just gonna put the end of the URL. So if I send it as a delete, it said, kinda of just returns the same value. And if I go back and do a git on this API, it should show us nothing. Okay, yeah, so an empty bracket there, empty array. If you refresh it, here's an empty array. So if I wanted to add something in here, I can do a, a post inside my body, I'm gonna do raw, I'm just gonna put a JSON and I'm gonna put a name, Eric, and I just send it as a JSON object, which means it looks kinda of like this. You have, uh, you put parentheses around each object that you're sending over, or around each item inside the object, field inside the object, and the value. So I can put Eric, age, you know, 123, I could send it, and here it is, it returns back that I got it, and if I refresh my browser here, you can see here now I have Eric. And then I could delete this or I could update this if I wanted to as well. Now that that's this is me talking to the API directly using Postman, but you could see I could definitely hook this up to my app and have it 
connect uh, directly over. So in my node or inside my Nuxt app, I can do an, a, a call using Fetch or Axios or whatever I want to my backend and then retrieve the information and then display it. And it's all there for me. It you know, took me about, I don't know, five minutes to do this, which is really cool. Now, I don't have time since I'm going to keep this tutorial really short. I'm not going to go back and actually create a whole app, but you can see that we have everything in place to do this. It even has some other tools if you wanted to. It has a way to dockerize this whole app, it has this MVN dockerize, and it has a deploy option, which I believe you can deploy to Heroku. Let's see here. Deploy. Yeah, so it asks you what do you want to deploy, client or server. If you do server, then I think it's going to try to deploy this somewhere for us, which I haven't set up yet. So we'll just give this a second. Okay, so it's asking me if I have Heroku just not installed in your system. Do you want to install it? Yes. And so this will go ahead and install the uh, API and everything I need. But I'm going to go ahead and stop it right here. But you can see if I wanted to, I could go ahead and install Heroku. I'll obviously have to have an account with them. I can go ahead and deploy it to that, that stack if I need, and it does it all for me. So I think this is perfect for just like fun little projects that you need. Uh, I really enjoy using JavaScript in the front end and the back end, so Express is a great way to do it. And MongoDB is just a really simple, uh, really simple database that I can use to store key value pairs. So I, I think this is a great way to just you know, get, get an app up, up and running really quickly. Let me know if you agree in the comments below. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for today. I appreciate it. Thanks.